Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Seek and Destroy Collects Ghost Rider, right here on our Highway to Hell edition of the show. And today we're going to talk about Ghost Rider number one. Uh, obviously, we already did a review of it. Uh, this is not a discussion video. I'm still not going to spoil a ton of stuff that happens in here. But uh, there's some bonus stuff in here that I purposely left out of my other video so I can make a completely separate video on it. Um, there is this thing uh, on the back called Hell is Other Places. And I thought this was a neat thing to maybe dissect and go over because this is clearly Ed Brisson doing some like world building here and uh, and, and building up what's going to happen in, maybe in the future of the stories. And then I also want to take a moment at the end here. There's a new caretaker. Um, the caretaker was a character that showed up in uh, other Ghost Rider books, the, the previous Ghost Rider uh, characters like uh, uh, Johnny Blaze and Dan Ketch and stuff. And uh, apparently that legacy has been passed on. The caretaker, I think, has a daughter now uh, or had a daughter or, or there's an, it's like a new character. I can't remember. Uh, I'm not fully caught up on this new version of Caretaker, uh, but there's a little short story at the end here called The Caretaker Chronicles, written also by Ed Brisson, but art by Juan Frigareri, and uh, this is kind of setting up, I guess, more of what's coming. So uh, we'll talk about that first, because the artwork's really, really great, and it has uh, our Caretaker character, um, and she's talking about how something's pulling at her, that she's got this, you know, uh, she hasn't been able to sleep for weeks and everything, and she's on her way to uh, a specific site, and there's this great panel here of like a crow pulling out like a, a ram's eyeball <laughs> it's so awesome i love when artists are like coming up with angles it's like filming a movie you know they're just like all right I, well in this i'm just gonna i don't know if the writer put that if ed Beeson put that in there or if the artist did whoever it did though i just love those little touches of like visual because it's like all right someone driving a motorcycle that can be very kind of boring on the open road um so adding in those little things kind of makes it more funny and uh, and makes you remember the panels a lot more so uh she finds this one location She's being drawn to it and she walks into it and she finds this like little library of like books of spells and stuff. And as she walks through it, like the flames erupt um, around her where it's like uh, these skulls light up, you know, to be like torches so that she can see. And then as she passes them, each one, each row, you know, lights up, which is the art's done really well there. The colors are they're, they're good, but at first it took me a minute to realize what was going on. I was like, what? oh, right. Okay. So they're lighting up as she walks by. I get it. Uh, but then it ends with this big splash page. And again, it's going to be spoilers. And so, oh yeah, uh, digital code, boom, right there. I forgot to mention that. Uh, first person to put that code in gets it. Uh, I have extra ones. And I said over the next couple episodes, I would put a code in. So we did one for the last episode, which was a collection video. And then now we have this one, and I think I have one more code. So the next Ghost Rider episode I do, I will be putting a digital code. So if you miss out on this one, like I said, come back, make sure you're subscribed, and you'll get another chance to get Ghost Rider number one. You'll get one more chance from me. So I had four codes total. Um, so hopefully, you know, they go into different homes and everybody is happy. So let me know down in the comments below if you did get the code, review this comic, and let me know what you think of it yourself. You can spoil the front half of the book if you want in the comments. So if you, have, you don't want spoilers, avoid the comment section because we might get into it down there. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to spoil this. this last page here where we get this big splash page of what's coming up in ghost rider it says coming upcoming in ghost rider it looks like there's a centaur archangel type creature with wings and swords and everything which looks cool i think this is lilith and her new form over here um, there's like a devil looking guy back here uh, who i can't pinpoint right now there's mephisto and then of course there's like this baby angel light up thing with wings and there's a like this like i don't know dead island with like a a giant dead body on it or something i don't know maybe we'll i want to see other places i want to see like limbo and stuff like that and that's where uh this gets me excited because i think ed brisson was thinking the same thing you know you get a character like ghost rider like jason aaron did a really good job with ghost rider when he wrote it and daniel way i thought did too um but daniel way told like semi personal smaller stories with like you know like mephisto and like things like that sure but uh but i feel like jason aaron started to take it up a notch bringing in heaven bringing these other elements and then now it seems like Ed Brisson is like, all right, let's let's expand. Like, where is hell uh, in conjunction to all these other things in Marvel lore? And I like that because it's very world building ish. Like, it's not something I probably would have thought of right off the top of my head working on a, a character like Ghost Rider. I probably would have kept things simple because that's just how the kind of writer I am. I do. I like small personal stuff sometimes. Um, I'm not very good at world building. It's not that I can't do it or haven't tried. It's just that it's, it doesn't come easy to me. And, I'm, and I don't know. These guys make it seem so freaking flawless. Uh, so anyway, we have here, um, what lies beyond the land of the living? For those of us questionable characters, there are a variety of extra dimensional repositories waiting to collect the divine spark within. So basically saying like, you know, there is a place for your soul. Uh, it doesn't have to be hell or heaven. There's other places in the Marvel Universe where it can go. So they talk about hell is a vast region of many powerful demons who trade on the torture of sinful souls. 
um, formerly overlorded by Mephisto. He was dethroned by Johnny Blaze, also known as Ghost Rider, who is now the new King of Hell. Um, so they set up Hell there, so you know where it is. Limbo, they talk about, which I really want to see more of Limbo. I'm always interested in something like that. Um, a sorcerer, I love that game Limbo too, that's really cool. A sorceress dimension Limbo was populated by demonic spellcasters twisted by dark energies. Once ruled by Belasco, it eventually served as the home for magic of the X-Men. Um, so that's kind of where she's, you know, kind of come into place and where she was like in charge of for a while. So tying it to X-Men lore. Um, Niflheim, this is really cool. Beneath the roots of Yggdrasil lies Niflheim. Yggdrasil is obviously the, the life tree, which I still believe, I thought maybe Groot was, you know, born from. That would have been a cool reveal because they did that Avengers thing where Franklin Richards is in the future with uh, Groot and they're floating in space and Groot's like a big tree. And I'm like, oh, that wouldn't that be cool if Groot became the next Yggdrasil after Yggdrasil gets burns up and falls. Um, and that would tie him to like Thor mythology. That'd be cool. But I guess he comes from a race of Groot, so whatever. Uh, that's less interesting to me, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Um, so yeah, Yggdrasil, uh, lies, beneath it lies Niflheim, a realm of cold, fog, and death. This is where Loki was obviously born. Um, but within Niflheim is the enormous, uh, uh, renowned region known as Hell, with one L, H-E-L. Uh, the domain of the Queen of the Dead, Hela and Karnia. So uh, that's where Niflheim's hell comes into play. Uh, then there's the Eighth City, and the Eighth City is used as an ancient prison for evil creatures by the seven capital cities of heaven. So the Eighth City is this place that where if you in heaven and you do wrong, I guess, some, I guess you can do wrong in heaven, uh, there's an Eighth City that says, because there's the seven cities of heaven, there's an Eighth City where you get locked up at. And uh, that's where evil creatures go, or evil creatures that are caught by heaven go, um, so that they don't return to hell and get reused in hell somehow. So uh, Eighth City, that sounds pretty cool. I hope they do more stuff with that. There's the Below Place, which is the source of, uh, of an elusive kind of gamma energy that metaphysically connects beings who have been mutated by gamma. The one below all and his hordes of demons are kept behind the green door. This is obviously what's going on in Immortal Hulk right now. So I love this. I love that it's explaining all the different realms, all the different worlds, the different versions of hell, where everyone is, um, because hell is many things, right? Like there's, they always say in like Dante that, uh, you know, that hell has stages. And so you can kind of look at it this way, only the stages aren't overlapping each other. They're just, you know, you know, out, out in the different parts of the universe than each other. Um, so the below place, that sounds cool, but that's where from Immortal Hulk. Uh, Sominus, which is thought to be one of the splinter realms, Sominus is ruled by the powerful demon lord Thog. Uh, it was a dark reflection of the mysterious benevolent realm of the uh, Theria embroiled in eternal war. So um, yeah, so Thog. So this one I don't know too, too much about. I, I feel like I remember reading something about this a while ago, but I can't remember too much about Sominus. So this is where you guys can educate me on stuff. Um, the Dark Dimension is the next one. The Dark Dimension is a chaotic patchwork landscape made from the scraps of long ago conquered dimensions. The laws of physics are fundamentally different in the Dark Dimension than on Earth, and it is populated largely by the brutish mindless ones and ruled by Dormammu. So this is the, the Dark Dimension where, you know, Doctor Strange, uh, you know, sometimes visits and stuff. This is where he pull, they pull their magic from, as, as shown in the movie, but also they talk about in the comic books. Um, so yeah, I love this. I love that they put all this Ed Brisson and everyone put this together just to kind of inform us on these different versions of hell or different places that your soul can go to um, that are, I guess, bad places for your soul to go to because they don't mention heaven other than the seven cities. Um, so yeah, so maybe they'll talk about that in a future book because uh, Dan Ketch was at one point from heaven. He was the blue ghost rider from heaven. So, uh, uh, or at least that was that was what it seemed on the surface or whatever. But yeah, it was, it was a really good story. Uh, Hades is located on the border of the river Styx and guarded by Cerberus. A savage three-legged dog, Hades, also known as the Underworld, is home to the spirits of the Olympian gods and their worshippers after death. Its ruler, Pluto's many attempts to destroy the universe have led to visits from Hercules, Thor, and many others. So this is obviously tying into Thor's mythology and Hercules' mythology as well, who's another really fun Marvel character that uh, they sometimes do great things with, and then, then people just forget about him. And then eventually a writer comes on and goes, hey, I read that run one time with Hercules and I liked him. I'm going to bring him back. So hopefully we'll see some of Hercules at some point. I'd like to see some of these characters interact with... I'm hoping this means... That Ghost Rider is going to meet Dormammu at some point or come across Dormammu or, you know, Johnny Blaze will um, or we'll see Hades or Pluto. Like, I, I'm hoping for all of this, like, you know, magic, you know, all that stuff, like, uh, you know, being in the the uh, Limbo Realm or Niflheim's hell. Like, I'd love to see all this, uh, you know, happen in Ghost Rider because that's what I think one of the things that I do like that uh, that they're doing with Venom 
it's not something I would do, but it's one thing I do like that Donnie Cates is doing is they're making Venom very much part of the Marvel Universe and they're tying him to like, you know, Thor and like S.H.I.E.L.D. in a way with Nick Fury with the symbiotes from Vietnam. And they're, they're doing that kind of stuff and it makes them feel more connected to the universe. If they do that with Ghost Rider with this kind of stuff, I would be very happy. Um, and then the last one they talk about is a uh, brimstone dimension putrid and hellish the brimstone dimension was supposed to be a prison for the uh neophim uh the uh, neophim neophim um an exiled race of demonic mutants azazel their leader escaped to father several mutant children whose powers rely on a connection to this dimension including nightcrawler of the x-men um so neophim, uh, neophim there's a there is a, that's not the word for it, but there's a, a word kind of like that, a Nephilim. Nephilim is a, is a word for like a half human, half angel. Uh, Nephilim, I guess, is uh, Zazel's realm. That was, uh, you know, the father of Nightcrawler. And uh, and he could teleport too. He was the red demon guy from X-Men First Class. Um, and then uh, and he, and where they teleport, they have to pass through a dimension. So it's not like, so it's like, oh, you know, he uh, Nightcrawler goes from here to here. But in that span of that time, he spends like moments or minutes or an hour or something in a, a dark brimstone dimension um so as as explained in like one of the cartoons i think and definitely the comic books for sure so um yeah so all those they reference all of them which is fantastic chris robinson the editor on this book put together a good team it's a special thanks to uh sienna pilnick uh jad seligan uh, seligman and elizabeth uh Beshearer, who uh, i guess all helped with you know planning out this so good work good you know the whole team here good work on this i love seeing this extra stuff the caretaker storyline is intriguing to the point where i want to learn more about this character because if she's drawn to these sites to learn these things in the badlands where she was drawn to in this one um if she's drawn to stuff like the ghost rider gets drawn to stuff uh, she could be an interesting character to deal with uh you know with the ghost rider so and she could also be that great character with some exposition plus i always liked having a caretaker character with with Ghost Rider just always is nice to have someone have some answers for when Danny Ketch is looking for them or when Johnny Blaze is looking for them. It's it's a great character to have uh, to help with some of the exposition because some of it's going to come across really goofy and so you're going to need a character that seems semi-grounded to deliver that information so it's a little less goofy. So I'm hoping that's the case with Caretaker here and I wanted to go over all this you know stuff about hell and the other realms and stuff so uh, i'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts let me know what you think and if you got the digital code for this let me know down below what your thoughts are of the book in general uh, as i said we already did review it so if you want to go back and watch that episode please do because it's fun it's a great book and i highly recommend buying it and we will probably not talk about any more of this until the next issue comes out and i think i'm going to do one more collection video we did one in the last episode so the next one may or may not be a collection video someone was saying oh you should make a video on the hulu show being canceled but I mean, really a whole video to just tell you the Hulu show got canceled. Like, I, like, and I've already talked about it in previous episodes. I heard they might have done that so they could put Ghost Rider in upcoming MCU movies. Uh, and they might do, like, the Johnny Blaze or Dan Ketch version. I hope they do the Dan Ketch version, to be honest with you. Um, and then maybe have Alejandra in there somewhere, like, as, like, a like a sidekick or, like, or something, you know, or, like, a, as a character that they set up so he can, Dan Ketch can one day pass the Ghost Rider tour or something. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it, but uh, I have a lot of ideas that I would like to see uh, done, but I definitely want to see Dan Ketch uh, in, a, in a film, you know, for MCU. I would love him to be the MCU Ghost Rider, um, and then maybe Johnny Blaze play the old grizzled uh, character that, you know, gives him information in it or something like that. Like, that would work for me. That way you could have kind of your cake and eating it, too. Um, and also we don't have to retread on the, the Nicolas Cage, you know, stuff too much either. Uh, but that'd be cool to see Nicolas Cage come back as Johnny Blaze passing the torch on to Dan Ketch. Like, I don't know. That could be cool too. Um, but, uh, anyway, let me know what your thoughts are of this, of all the different realms of hell and stuff. Uh, you know, I think it's interesting stuff. I'm glad they put that in there. It's great world building, like I said, and I think that's clearly what they want to do. Uh, Ed Brisson and all the other writers on this and artists and everyone who's working on this book. I saw them tweeting out of uh, New York Comic Con that they have big plans. There's a big war coming up war of the ghost riders jason aaron helped set that up a little bit in the avengers book where you see johnny blaze in hell with all the other ghost riders alejandra you know and robbie reyes and everyone like i think robbie reyes will probably come back to earth after this race thing uh, but everyone else is stuck all the other past ghost riders are stuck in hell including the ghost rider of the like that was on the woolly mammoth the bc ghost rider uh so i'm, I'm really curious to see how this is all going to unfold and if they're going to build to a big event book with ghost rider count me in all the way. I will be on that road to hell for sure. But I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know what they are down below. And we'll continue our conversation as always down there. And make sure you stay subscribed because we have one more digital code to give out in the next episode. And I'll probably film it early next week and I'll get it up to you as soon as possible. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, see you in the future. Peace.